In this lesson, we'll be talking about common CV pitfalls. In this series, one of our main goals is to help you think like the prospective employer. As with any piece of good writing, it's crucial to consider your audience. Remember the administrator who had to sift through 118 CVs in two days? You can help reduce her workload by making your CV easy to skim so that she can quickly find your minimum and desired qualifications. The first two pages of your CV are crucial in demonstrating that you're the best fit candidate. In module two, lesson one, we discussed how to tailor your CV according to the job advertisement. Besides being aware of how to organize the information you present, the common pitfalls that people encounter in creating effective CVs have to do with formatting and choosing what content to include. A common misconception is that your CV needs to be filled with text so that your prospective employer will be impressed with the amount of experience you have. Notice how, when you do this, it's difficult to parse and find the information you need. Just as sentences require commas for a person to take a breath, a page also requires white space for a person's eyes to take a break. White space, when used properly, helps direct a reader's eye to the important information. Using white space alongside proper formatting you can help your prospective employer easily identify how you meet the job's qualifications. By formatting, we mean the use of columns, headings, and typeface. Columns help organize information. Headings direct the reader's focus. Typeface also signals organization and can sometimes be used to highlight keywords. Consider the rule of thirds as you design the layout of your CV. Notice how the document is more aesthetically pleasing when the indentation is between a fourth and a third of the page, while it becomes unbalanced and impractical for our purposes by the time it reaches one half of the page. Use no more than three fonts. This includes your name on the top of the page. In addition to the main heading on the first page, we also recommend a simple heading on the subsequent pages that includes your full name, email address, and page number. For the sake of simplicity, I typically use only one font throughout the body of my CV, where headings are bolded or larger to draw emphasis. Notice that when too much formatting is used, your eyes are pulled in too many directions, so it's hard to tell what to focus on. Through placement and bolding, would it be best to highlight the dates of employment, the job title, or the place of employment? Notice how a simple formatting change highlights a different piece of information. If the goal is to apply for an English language teaching position, which piece of information would be the most important to highlight? For our purposes, the goal is for the design to feel invisible all the while helping the hiring committee focus on what's key. In terms of content, the most common pitfall that we see in CVs is a lack of specific language to describe past accomplishments and responsibilities. Oftentimes, teachers forget that the hiring committee likely does not know about the specific context of their current position. For example, a French lecturer at a community college might list taught four courses each semester. This is too general. A hiring committee would want to know more about the student population, the format of the course, and any additional activities related to the teaching. A more illustrative description might be, taught two face-to-face -face and two hybrid courses in introductory and intermediate French each semester. Class size, 15 to 20 students. Courses fulfill community college language requirements and are transferable as state university prerequisites. Designed communicative language activities for practice of the four skills, listening, speaking, reading, writing. Cooperated with teaching team to revamp midterm assessments, which were used by colleagues in later semesters. 
Now, do you have a better idea of the skills and qualifications of this teacher? Sometimes the hardest part of creating a master CV is remembering all the volunteer and paid work experiences you have had, including the specifics of tasks and accomplishments. Consistently, when we talk more with a language teacher, we find out about additional relevant experiences that appear nowhere on their CV. When you have completed something as a matter of fact, sometimes you may not realize that it's a true accomplishment. The remedy to this pitfall is to talk through the requirements of the job you're applying for with a trusted friend or colleague. This person can look over your CV to find out more about your experiences. They might ask, how many students did you work for in this position? What did you have to do to accomplish X? With whom did you have to collaborate? What kinds of new skills or competencies did you have to gain in order to do X? For this particular job requirement, did you have any other experiences not listed on your CV that required the same skills or had similar responsibilities? This will hopefully jog your memory of aspects that you may have left out. A common complaint about the tailored CV is how time-consuming it can be to create a separate tailored CV for each job application, especially when it's heavy application season. Our response is this. When you're doing a job search for your career, we hope that you'll be looking for your best fit. And hopefully this will lead to career bliss. If you found such a position, isn't it worth the effort? The tips we've provided in this lesson all come with the caveat that they're based in the US context. Different conventions will apply depending on the country. For example, Job application forms in China and Japan typically require an ID photo, and often candidates are asked to include their birth date and even marital status on the first page. In the U.S., it would be illegal to ask for this information under laws enforced by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. If you're applying for positions outside of the U.S., it's important to become familiar with the conventions of the countries where you're applying. To summarize, always keep your audience in mind. Let the facts of your experience show your skill set. Make your CV easy to skim so that it clearly identifies how you're a good match. And use specific language to help the hiring committee envision the assets you bring.